This is the Canon RF 100mm macro lens. Now I introduced this last year, but at the time we weren't allowed to take any pictures with the sample that I had. This, however, is a full production copy. I've got it on the front of an EOS R5, and behind me is a butterfly house. So we're gonna go in and see exactly what this can do. Whilst we're filming this, mask restrictions are in place. So I do have to mask up, but I'm sure you can still hear me just fine. One of the biggest differences between this 100 mil and previous 100 mils is the magnification on this is 1.4 times, whereas we've seen one times magnification before. And that basically means you can be really, really close. The minimum focusing distance on the like Canon specs is 0.26 meters. However, remember that's from back here. With the length of the lens, it means you can be almost touching the subject, basically. You can get so close and therefore you can get so much detail. Now, alongside cameras like the R5 and the R6, this has dual image stabilization up to eight stops, and that is super rated. I think the lens on its own is five stops if you were using it on a camera that couldn't offer you that dual IBIS. However, it is worth noting that SEPA ratings aren't tested at close-up ranges. So this lens wasn't tested at one times magnification. So Canon did their own test, which was really transparent to be fair to Canon. And they found that at one times magnification, it's two stops of dual image stabilization, which isn't amazing, but it, it's better than nothing. Years ago, far longer than I care to remember, when I first started um, taking photographs, a friend of mine was getting rid of his 100 mil Canon, it turns out. And it was really old, it had some broken bits, the focus didn't really work very well. And he, I said, I'll, I'll take it off your hands, I'll just manual focus it. At the time I had like a 20D, um, I had some film cameras at the time, I'd been shooting with Nikon, all sorts of stuff. And having that 100mm focal length really just opened my eyes to how versatile it was. Um, being able to shoot everything from, you know, macros to portraits to landscapes to birds if they were close enough, it really... I, I love that focal length and I worked with it for a long time and it is so nice getting back to using this again. Now, the difference being with some of those older lenses is that the focusing was just not great. I mean, my one was broken, but in general, the focusing on macros can take a little bit of time. Now in this, we've got dual nano USM motors, which are very quick, very precise. And today I've noticed it just being so accurate. I mean, using it with butterflies and all right, I couldn't really track them in the air, mostly because there was thousands of children around us, uh, which were making it very difficult. Um, but in terms of just how quickly it locks on and now shooting portraits, you know, I've been taking little images here and there and I've had this for a few days and I've been using it at home. The focusing on this is just so, so quick. It makes it a delight to use, especially with the R5, which already has a fantastic focusing system. One of the greatest things about 100mm focal length is just how you can compose an image. If you want to, you can use it quite wide in landscapes. And also it allows you to create layers throughout your shot. So if you're shooting like portrait here, I can create, I can have this foreground. If I wanted to, I can take out some of these leaves here. You know, I can blow out the background and we can have just this nice consistent green. So it does allow you to create a, a lot of layers through your image, or if you want to, you can just stop down your aperture and have something nice and sharp all the way through. So it just gives you that versatility again. Back to work. The build of this lens is quite like what we see from other Canon RF lenses. It's got that nice tough plastic, so it feels really durable and it is dust and weather sealed as well. So drizzly days are no problem at all. Now only weighs 730 grams, which I think is nice and light. If as an addition to the kit bag, it doesn't feel like a big weighted option. It feels quite nice for just how versatile it is. Now on the lens itself, we do have a focus limiting switch. So that can go full, it can go 0.5 meters to infinity or 0.26 meters to 0.5. So nice bit of control there for you. We've got the AF to MF switch. We've got the stabilizer on or off. And then over here, we have a lock, which I'll tell you about in a minute. In terms of the rings on the lens, we have the SA control, which again, I'll come back to. 
we have here the manual focus ring, which actually is quite nice. And where my hand sits on this lens, don't know if it'll be the same for everyone, but for me, that's a perfect placement. Sometimes I find them a little bit too far forward. So for me, really like the placement on this lens. And then we've got the control ring at the front, which is the ring that's in some of the RF lenses, which allows you to control things from the camera. So basically you can set this ring to be ISO, aperture, shutter speed, whatever you'd like, you can set it on there, or you can just have it doing nothing if you don't find it a useful addition. Now this does have a slight click to it, but as I say, it's out of the way. So I don't find that I'm like knocking it accidentally and making that noise. If you want to, you can send it back to camera, Canon apparently and get that de-clicked, I've heard. Uh, but I really can't see why anyone would bother. The SA control ring is something that is new for this lens and I feel like I should cover because it's on there. Basically, this allows you to change the shape of your bokeh and soften your subject's focus. That little lock switch locks it out, which is why it's been locked all day. Uh, but now I've unlocked it, I can go to negative and that will basically soften up the bokeh, give an incredibly smooth background, but it will also soften up my subject as well. Now it does allow you to create some quite nice effects, to be fair, it's not my cup of tea. Some people will like it, some people won't. And basically it's an extra feature, right? So if you wanna use it, you can, if not, you don't have to, you can lock it out. Now, if you go all the way the other end to the plus sign, that will sharpen the edges of your bokeh. It'll give you some really sort of defined circles behind your subject. And again, soften that subject up a little bit. It does this by independently moving the nano USM motors to create these effects, basically. So if you want to use it, it's there. I feel like there might be some times, you know, maybe if you're shooting um, like a little girl in a fairy dress and there's a beautiful background, you've got some lovely light, Possibly you might want to just soften things up a little bit there, change the bokeh in the background. The thing is, there's no other way to do this. It's not really a photoshoppable thing. You, you can if you've got the skill, but it's a pain and it's much nicer to take it in shot if you are going to do an effect like this. But it's there if you want it and if not, you just pop it back to the middle and turn that little lock switch and it's not going to move, which is perfect. If you'd like to find out more about this RF 100mm macro lens, then have a look on our website. There's a ton of info in there. Pop a link in the description for you. Or of course, you can ask us any questions you need to by popping a comment right here. Now, I've had a great time with this. It's nice and sharp. Images are great. It's super versatile and it's nice and light to just carry around for a day. If you've got one, let us know how you're getting on with it in the comments. Or as I say, if you do have some questions or you want to let us know your thoughts on this, then please feel free to get in touch. But for now, a massive thank you for watching and I hope you join, join, join us again soon for some more videos from Wex Photo Video when I warm up. <laughs>